or TSA are like the rudest. The rudest. I'm from Ireland, so we curse a lot. When you live there and you're used to it, it's not annoying, but as a foreign person, it is super annoying. So today I am going to be dipping into Reddit and checking out 10 bizarre things foreigners don't understand about the USA and I am a foreigner. However, I have visited the USA on vacation a lot of times, like work vacation. So I feel like maybe at this stage I will have some insight into being able to answer some of these questions. However, you probably, if you are from the United States or Canada, will also have better answers than me. <laughs> so feel free to chip in in comments. I, Diane Jennings, do not endorse these things that are not understood, so don't come at me. We're just reading them. Maybe I do endorse some of them. We'll see. But this was number two on Patreon's picks for a list video. So if you want to join the patrons and have a say in what videos I do, do join us here. Okay. First up we have, oh, ooh, straight into it. Pew, pew. I think I can say that on YouTube in 2023. Guns and explicit violence are fine on the TV slash cinema, but nipples are evil. Yeah, that is a good point. Like there is a lot of that stuff on American television and also in video games and that, but like you literally cannot show a nipple. And in lots of parts of Europe, like it's free the nipple central. It's very normalized to be topless on beaches in a lot of parts of Europe. And if you stare at people with their tops off, like you're the weirdo. I do find that funny though. Number two, okay, well, we knew this one was coming. 21 is the legal drinking age when you can drive at 15 and you can be in the army. Okay, I know a lot of you guys explained this to me. So let me try and explain it back. Apparently the legal drinking age was raised when there was like some mother group about drunk driving teenagers and they got the legal drinking age raised. I still haven't got like much of an insight though into how the culture actually is from like 16 to 21. Some of you guys have told me like pretty much everybody drinks younger in the States but I haven't seen it for myself so. It's even more bizarre to me that when I actually see like a 15 year old driving a car. I think 16 is the legal age, but they do start practicing driving younger. To me, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so freaking dangerous. But at the same time, I guess you're braver when you're that age, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Like I don't drive because I am too anxious. Like I have a breakdown when I try to drive and it's totally a me problem. But yeah, 21 is the legal drinking age. Like who are you kidding? I guess it's a case of like, maybe the fear is if it was lowered to 18, then it would be more normalized to drink at 16 and then 14. So I kind of get where you're coming from on it. Food. Why your small size is equal to our large size? I think I know the answer to this again. Ah. I think this is to do with something called the, the, the value proposition. So businesses compete with each other. If you can get like a bigger burger in one restaurant than in the restaurant next door, you'll think it's like better value. I do find I lose all sense of portion size after I come back from the States though, like literally. When you're serving up food in your houses, maybe you guys can answer this for me in comments. Do you serve as large portion sizes as you would get in a restaurant or do you serve more like smaller portion sizes? That's a really interesting question. I would love to know the answer to. But yeah, my understanding is people say like, oh, for $10, I can get like seven chicken wings here. Whereas in the restaurant next door, I can only get five chicken wings for $10. So I think that's that's where that comes from. You guys explain that to me. Oh, this is a good one. I relate to this. Why do you feel so unwelcomed at the border slash airport when the people inside of the country are so nice? Your TSA are like the rudest. The rudest. I genuinely feel like I'm coming through like a prison when I enter the country. The people who ask the questions at border control are usually really nice, but the people doing the cues for like bringing your stuff through the x-ray machines and telling you to take off your shoes and stuff, like they're so rude. Obviously not every single person I'm talking as a general. If you work in TSA and you're nice, like, Great. But in Europe, usually those people tend to have to be nice because they're sort of almost the face of the country. Like they're the first people that you will meet from that country when you get into that country. So generally they're usually very polite and nice. Whereas I have, my experience has been 
TSA like shout at you like you're an idiot. Unfortunately. Next up, the obsession with censoring profanity. So you guys have explained to me that different states are more down with cursing. However, here on the channel, people call me out if I say Jesus Christ. That is a cultural thing, okay? We take the Lord's name in vain culturally. So like, you can't hold that against me. That's my culture. But there are some people who are like, oh, profanity. I'm like, really, you haven't heard the F word before? There are certain situations where I feel it's not appropriate to go around effing and blinding. Like generally speaking on my channel, I try not to curse unless I really mean it. Like sometimes if you're trying to be emphatic about something, then cursing is like appropriate. Like it was effing huge or it was so effing been small. I don't think I've ever seen a European be reactive to profanity. I have heard from my sister-in-law who is English that some people in her family are reactive to curse words. So that's interesting. Like maybe there are different parts of Europe that are more reactive to it, but I'm from Ireland, so we curse a lot. Oh. Okay, I'm just reading this. Don't hold it against me, but also I don't necessarily disagree with it. Why every one of you that I've met is lovely, charming, and witty, yet collectively you're a bunch of... I didn't say it. I will say that I think that's probably down to the most obnoxious people are usually the loudest. And I think that contributes to the fact that in Europe, our observations of American politics are such that everybody is an extremist. Like I know that because I talk to you guys on the internet, but all we hear in Europe from the news and from Twitter or X, as it's now called, is like the most extreme of everything. It's a funny one, but I do think like a lot of Europeans are like Americans, ah! Whereas like every American person pretty much that I've met as an individual has been cool and chill. Pretty much, like there are some psychos. <laughs> but there are psychos from Europe too. Not using the metric system. Okay, this is when like I find myself, like I've willed myself to care. I don't care what system a country or a continent uses, like use whatever system you want. We can just convert stuff on our phones, you know? You can just do the conversion on your phone. It's not a big deal. I just don't care what system you guys use. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. I can't bring myself to care. How theatrical politics are. I actually freaking love this. I love this because when you guys have a big election in the United States, the whole world is subjected to having to listen to everything about that election. Again, because social media, I guess, and our news becomes fascinated with it. And in part, that is because your politics are so much more interesting the way they're staged than our politics. We have a lot of laws, like you can't slander your competition in Ireland like I couldn't be like Mickey Joe is an absolute dickhead and it's because he plays poker on a Friday night like you can't do that and I guess there's like a certain amount of dignity to that but also transparency it's always shocking to me though how many shocking things come out about American politicians and people are like mm. like we do get scandals about politicians but they don't necessarily come at election time in Europe. I think it must be outlawed in a lot of political countries. Like, don't get me wrong. They talk smack at each other, but they sort of don't bring each other's personal lives into it. Anyway, I'm very entertained by American politics. Next up, okay, I, I relate to this one. Why Americans say England, but they mean Britain. To Scots, it's kind of offensive. Okay, I get that, I get that. I sometimes do that too, honestly. I'm from the Republic of Ireland, if you didn't know. We're our own country, we're not part of Britain or the United Kingdom. I have to correct people in comments every day, every day. There was a whole war ongoing. But yeah, sometimes when I'm talking about Britain, I will just say England. Also, when I'm talking about England, I sometimes do just say British people and I'm just meaning English people. But I also feel like the Scottish and the Welsh know that we're not talking about them. I don't know where Scotland is, but last time I heard a lot of them were seeking independence. So with the whole Brexit thing, you'd have to ask them though. Oh, it's always this, it's always this. Why is the tax on an item you buy only added after it gets scanned? Why is it not just included in the price? I can answer this. So different states have different taxes on products and some states don't even have tax on products. 
Delaware, Montana, Oregon, New Hampshire. I think they have 0% sales tax last I checked. Whereas places like California have like 10% or maybe nearly 10%. When you live there and you're used to it, it's not annoying. But as a foreign person, it is super annoying because you don't know how much everything actually is. And again, because a lot of you guys pay for things only on cards that doesn't matter that much but like if i'm going somewhere and i have cash i want to know exactly how much cash to bring i don't think it will probably ever change because i think rolling out anything universally across the united states is difficult but it is it is difficult makes my head go Ugh. amazon have started doing it i don't know if it's just on my account because i have a business account but they've started like telling me the price and then in like little brackets and grades i'll be like plus net fat total and i'm like well then that's the total just tell me the total but i don't know i think we're always gonna butt heads on that one but maybe you think differently in comments i really want to hear from you let me know shout out today to a couple of very special people it's the karmic goals crew sing your karmic goals crew song Comic goes, comic goes, comic goes, body chewy, hypoallergenic dog food, which is expensive. Yeah. Thank you to all of our buddies on the Karmic Goals crew. Here is all of your names flying past our heads. Wow, wow, wow. Mommy, leave me alone. Thank you to you guys for supporting the channel. We appreciate you. If you like this video, you might also like this video somewhere on the screen right now. That's it for today. See you guys on the inside. Bye.